A very warm welcome to our audience. My name is Devika and I am the host of this platform, Artificial Intelligence Journalism Dialogue, that is hashtag AIJD, where we bring in personalities and important people who are associated with artificial intelligence technology and are doing a great job in the field. Today, we have with us Arijit Bhattacharya, who is a serial entrepreneur, mentor, angel investor, international business developer. He has so many laurels to his name. He's the founder of Virtual Infocom, founder of World Leader Summit, TEDx speaker, game developer, business matchmaking expert, government advisor. He's an AI evangelist, blockchain specialist, and globetrotter. He has helped 6,000 startups to start their venture, helped several many as mentor in 90 plus countries. With over 23 years of experience in shaping businesses, he is ranked among 14 among world's top 50 blockchain thought leaders in the world. He has so many accolades, I'm sure if we just give his intro, this 30 minute interview will fall short of it. So I'll just um, uh, share his uh, bio website uh, later on the platform. And for now, uh, please welcome Arijit Bhattacharya. How are you, sir? All good. Thank you so much for the beautiful introduction and inviting me in your talk show. Yes, it's an honor actually to have you here. And um, I know you have been uh, keeping busy a lot and thank you so much for your time. So, sir, not taking much time again, I'll just start with my first question. Artificial intelligence, uh, what do you, uh, what does it mean to you and how do you see its scope uh, in Indian uh, lines, basically? Okay. So AI, as you know, um, I'm not sure whether this will sound a little bit of different to your audience or not. AI, the real implementation of AI actually started in game development. Uh, you can't ignore that. If you look at the earlier days of Atari, who are one of the pioneer of game development industry, in initial days, we call them as those golden days of Silicon Valley wherein these guys, they started their very simple game with the help of artificial intelligence who is playing the game with the user, which means when you are interacting, you do some kind of work, the computer is giving you a response back depending on their own kind of input that you're giving. Now, when I'm saying that computer is giving a response back, that means there is a, a definitely an algorithm, definitely a coding that is happening in the background. Those line of approach has been updated in last three decades a lot. And after running 24 years of my business ventures, multiple different ventures, we have been using artificial intelligence in a lot many different areas. And when you ask me, what does it mean by AI? AI in today's world in 2022, don't have a very specific kind of definition of saying that it is a response from computer. Rather, it became learning of machines, meaning understanding their own algorithm, giving them uh, input, depending on their input. Nowadays, they have a thought process. Mm -hmm. And that thought process definitely is created by human being, but machines are becoming intelligent day in and day out so that they can think on their own nowadays. Now, when we say thinking, just imagine human being. Human being have got imagination, which is not there in computer system or any intelligence system at the moment. But now we are trying to give a little bit of imagination to these machines. And when we do that, when you try to go towards that groundbreaking stuff, we need to understand what kind of machine language we're using what kind of flexibility we are giving to the system. Now this became beyond gaming. This became towards the industry implementation factors. Mm. Now, when we talk about AI and implementation factors in industry, in today's world, a drone can fly on the top of uh, maybe a field and it can detect, understand and calculate what kind of cops that you need to use in next couple of months. It can detect and understand the weather, give you the exact kind of feedback of the upcoming weather that you're going to get. Mm. Calculating such kind of complex system is definitely coming from all those kind of algorithm that we are implementing. I'm not making this very, very complicated for a normal user because if I go, it will become a little bit of techie. 
but somehow the subject is a little bit of technology oriented. So when we talk about algorithms, we have a lot many different algorithms in the AI, which includes, of course, parallel algorithm, a lot many others. For a normal user who is coming to this world and trying to explore the world of opportunities, they can probably start with a language called Python. It's one of the best language wherein you can learn and understand AI in a very simple way, mm. interact and communicate with hardware. And depending on those kind of communication, you can definitely get the best possible answer. Now, why people are using AI? Because AI nowadays is giving 99% accuracy because it doesn't have any kind of emotion. So their accuracy level becomes 99% accurate. When you put human um, emotion into any decision making process, we sometimes are, we sometimes take a lot many decision which is probably not good or bad, but for a system, it is zero, one and fuzzy logic. Mm -hmm. So when you work with that, the binary yeah, language. Handling such kind of decision becomes much more easier. So the terms, yeah, definitely. So the terms deep learning, machine learning, NPL, these are the terms which people are associating with. Uh, uh, th that's how the algorithms work through machine learning is through deep learning and uh, the study, especially for the students who are upcoming, upcoming generation, which is there in colleges and all. So for them, what advice would you have, especially media students, if I talk about? See, in today's world, media became completely different. I mean, this is not the world of those traditional media. I'm so sorry about this statement. Mm. When we look at internet and social media, there are a lot of things that's happening. And if people are not uh, at par with what is happening in the technology world, as a media student, it's going to be very difficult. Number one, they need to understand what is deep fake. Deep fake is one of the crucial factor in today's world. When you're dealing with media, I'm not sure how much time you're giving, uh, any, any media students are giving to the internet world. Probably they are using only the, the initial layer. But if you are going through deep web and dark web, there lies the main beauty of understanding journalism in terms of real, um, finding the real truth, I would say, okay? So when we talk about getting one news, sometimes people just take the snap, put it in WhatsApp, say that this is what's happening in Ukraine. But mm. we never ever cross check. We never ever verify from where these video is coming or the picture is coming. We never ever cross check. There is a verification process. It's so simple to understand whether this is a fake news or whether this is a original news. In fact, to understand deep fake, it needs a very special kind of training and understanding. It needs complete boost of your IQ and EQ level to understand what is deep fake and what is normal and what is not normal. Mm -hmm. Else, it's going to be real challenging to pursue anything in the media field because I understand at least 90% of world population, they rely and trust on the media news. And when you have something which is not proper, it's going to be a disaster. And in today's world, the one news, the probably the, the, the duration of one news before it comes to the market is max 23 seconds. So it's not limited to your TV or your, your news channel. It is now on a very fast route. And as a human mind, if you really want to understand what is real news, in today's world, smart people, they don't rely on one media. They rely on multiple different medias. So as a student, when you're creating any kind of news, you need to read a lot. I will take you back to the basics. You need to read a lot, understand a lot, and then try to understand what is happening in real life and then create probably a small news. Another small in input for you, Devika, nowadays people don't have a lot many time to read a lot, okay? Mm. If, you are, if we are writing a blog, if it is not a very interesting one, people may not read it. In today's world, with 500 words, a blog, and expressing everything with all those inputs is a little bit of challenge for a media student, but we need to do that. It's not that people don't have time, people have a lot many time. 
trust me on this but they don't want to spend their time to read that much amount of information because there are so many different information that is there in internet and people rely on videos more than text mm. which is a little bit of alarming because in video you can retweak and tweak more than your writing writing can be cross verified very easily but when you create a deep fake oriented video it is not that easy to cross verify so totally. i think that's that's one input that media students should look at if you are a media student i'll highly appreciate if you can learn a little bit of technology otherwise you cannot mix and match and then create a proper news yes and i think uh, literacy ai literacy in media colleges especially in india uh, corporate people have that idea have that sense that what works in the uh, corporate culture but the students the academicians the experts in the field they are not uh, i personally feel that they are not well versed with the uh, technologies and the things that are going in the market uh, they are still relying on those old ways of uh, education probably so any uh, suggestions there how probably the academicians and experts in colleges can update the media literacy probably i can give you the entire syllabus if you want but i will <laughs> give you a small bit of input if if that is helpful for others number one um let's not start with ai if it's a media student they cannot understand ai if they are not from the technology background hmm the only thing that they can start with is uh, basic languages like c sharp not c or c++ it's not going to help them they can start with c sharp based on ai learning the next step can be learning of python depending on the deep fake and the third step that they can do is to learn and understand the morphing remorphing and how to create such kind of fake news and make it popular so the fourth point would be how to deal with social media and uh, search engines bypass it and then learn and understand how to optimize it so if you learn and understand how to optimize social media and internet it will be very easy for a media student to understand the opposite kind of mind for an example if i am if i am a penetration tester as a technologist i need to understand how a mindset of a hacker should should work mm. otherwise i cannot actually understand how to protect uh, the systems of our clients from those kind of smart minds right. so in today's world smartness became different in earlier world smartness was a little bit of different where people used to say that wow you know what this guy is really smart because he is doing some good job in today's mm -hmm. world if you are making money out of doing probably little bit of keyboard work and mouse work people call them smart so probably as a student you need to understand how to work with that as well another basic point the fifth one in the syllabus probably you need to literate people how to do protect your own server system not the website website securing is not the basic thing mm -hmm. how to protect your server system your news media system and how not to get it um i shouldn't say this but how not to get it hacked by some third party people are implementing a lot of rules a lot of regulation in their company but sometimes we miss the basic thing how this media news is being published mm -hmm. and when we try to do that because of less knowledge sometimes it's leaked and when it leaked it's a loss of the entire company and it's a big loss so if you ask me those things needs to be there in the syllabus those are basics also if i upgrade a little from students to journalists in the field so earlier journalists were simply those print media digital journalists but is there is this the time that a journalist should also develop some technology yes there are data scientists there are data researchers in the field that's a new uh, job segmentation developing in the journalism area but uh, do journalists also need to upgrade their skills not just in the editorial segment but they also need to learn some technology part to probably uh, uh, you know understand uh, things better or utilize things utilize technology better 
Devika, you know what? I'm sorry for this statement. Maybe a lot many of your your audience will be a little bit of pissed off about this statement of mine. But data science is basically a term. Hmm. It's not a rocket science, right? So data science meaning I am managing my data in a very very easy and cozy way with a specific methods, and we have been dealing it like. I don't know. I mean, probably more than two decades uh, as of now. Hmm. We understand our audience. We understand whenever we launch any kind of product in the market, we understand from where our audience is coming, and we have a very targeted, specific, country-wise uh, product launching uh, structure. Now, coming back to your question, whether a normal journalist should understand and learn this? Yes, definitely yes, definitely yes. For that. you really don't need to be a data scientist for that you need to learn and understand the way this this curvature and the graph is happening in the uh, in the normal technology world now mm. what i call as curve and structure when we look at any kind of uh, say okay i'll give you a live example say i'm traveling and i'm going to uh, going to dubai okay and people are watching that there are a couple of posts that's happening from my social media mm-hmm. maybe we are doing a investor round table maybe we are meeting lot many people we are having dinner we are meeting lot many business people the perception comes that there is a business trip happening and if i am going to say uh, to some 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 expo or some another event perception comes that okay fine this fellow probably is there because there is a event that's happening hmm. so as a as a person as a normal person the perception always comes that okay there is a business trip happening but if you look at the personal life maybe the business trip is completely different what it shows in the social media now how will you define it when i post i always post it with specific information layers Mm-hmm. a person can extract those information depending on the words that i am using now understanding those words on a keyword specific segment needs a special kind of training example if i am posting like i am meeting a family office with some ceo of that family office and we are having a handshake and this is the kind of way people should raise funds and this is the kind of way people shouldn't raise funds and this is the kind of timing that needs to be done then the information i want to give is if you are willing to raise fund come to us these are the kind of structure that we have and these are the kind of family offices that we have as a partner so if you are willing to raise fund these are the ways that you should go for but as a normal person devika you understand it because you are from the media industry but from a normal person's perspective Wow, that's an amazing picture. Picture with another CEO. So a CEO is handshaking with another CEO. You know, it's just so, a networking event, probably. That's the yeah. idea someone gets. Yeah. So in today's world, when we work with social media and we put such keywords, the reason I'm writing those words because it goes to the specific algorithm, and it becomes a little bit of popular. and it drags that from from linkedin goes to us twitter redirect that to instagram and then goes back to facebook that's how the entire structure has been defined as a circle so as a media person coming back to your question this needs to be understood what i am placing and where i am placing and how i am placing hmm. and that means you need to learn and understand that every day they are changing their style of working with algorithms yes. depending on that you need to tweak and retweak your words and hashtags so that understanding that, needs to be there yeah i think google no, changes I mean, its seo knowledge every 6 months or 9 months so every 9 months every, something new every, comes every up every 6 months every 6 months every 6 months six and mostly people don't have any idea about that even journalists don't have any idea about that so people need to include those skills into their uh, daily work day to day life i guess so uh, when i say can i add something can i add oh, sure something? sure sure please 
So if you are working with Google, I think uh, this is right time to understand that there is another very powerful search engine called Bing. So you need Bing. to optimize that as well. News, which is being read by millions of millions of users. We are only concentrating on Google, but you need to understand in certain countries, Google is not available. Hmm. So you need to penetrate and optimize other search engine and other tools as well. If you really want to become a global media. Exactly. In fact, I have worked with uh, Microsoft's uh, AI based project, comment moderation project, and even on Bing News, I have worked on that. So that's actually got me curious three years back and I decided to do all this stuff and uh, come into artificial intelligence journalism dialogue and all. So when I say artificial intelligence journalism, there's a great man in Dubai itself. His name is uh, Mohammed Abdul Zahir. And uh, he is, uh, I think, PMO to the uh, nation, uh, to the king over there. And he has defined this jargon. He has also come up with artificial intelligence journalism model. So I'm trying to reach him also in ways. Uh, but uh, what do you think of this? Do you think it's a jargon, artificial intelligence journalism? Or it is still, uh, uh, because this term is not used by many so far. So... Well, it needs to be there. And very soon, you will see that uh, probably in next, uh, who can say, maybe in next three years, mm -hmm. you will see that the news is being developed and probably being shared by robots. Very soon, this is going to come. Adoption of such kind of technology may be a challenge, but it's going to come. Technology cannot stop. So when you look at that, we may think that job of a journalist is not there. No, it's opposite. The reason robots are being used because they can they can be used for 24 into 7. Hmm. A human being cannot. But there is a human brain, probably a three human brain, which is working with that particular robot. And definitely when you talk about artificial intelligence based journalism, I would use that term. It is much needed in today's era. And without that, it's not going to be very, very easy to detect, understand, and release media news and make things work for the world. I agree to I'm that. I'm not going very deep, but it's, it's a fact. It's, no, I agree to fact. that. It took us like almost one year to help uh, the, the deep learning algorithms of Microsoft uh, understand the difference between different spellings of F-U-C-K. It took us one year to actually yeah. get the algorithms work on that. Every time a new word popped in, there were symbols, there were so many things. So yes, it's 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 going to be the new age. And um, where do you think the more um, uh, impact would come? Will it be the editorial side of the news or the user-generated content? Because there's a lot, uh, you know, influencers are coming up. There's so much uh, content creation online, Instagram is there and there's so much. So where do you think uh, another three years will see the most of the activity in terms of AI? Not on the not on the editorial part. Editorial part will be completely redefined and retweaked. Hmm. I personally feel that it will be on the user end. Okay, let me tell you something. It might look very, very funny. You know how many people watch reels of others instead of watching news? <laughs> yes, millions. You get millions. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense if you're watching reels of somebody else who is doing some kind of funny act. I'm so sorry about this. Technique. And that is just one but, song going around a million times. So that particular song, Kacha Badam, <laughs> poor chap, he created this song. He became a celebrity, but his song has been used by millions of users. It's been watched by billions of people. Hmm. Okay. They are spending time to watch this, watch those dances, watch those moves. For what? Are they getting paid for it? No, because people need a certain level of entertainment and people need to connect their own kind of breed. Let me define this. If I am from village and I'm watching a reel becoming popular from another village girl or boy, I will watch that again and again with mm. the same feeling that if he can do it, I can also do it. Next level of journalism is not about sending stories of only celebrities or what is happening in the world or the world uh, politics that's happening. Next level of journalism is localization. 
if we don't understand how to tweak, retweak, work with localization, I think we are missing a lot. Right, right. Also coming to this content creation and um, so personal branding and unique content creation, I, I realize, and especially during COVID times and many entrepreneurs lost their businesses and they started using digital skills. There were people using, but I'm again talking about the localization level. People at the very uh, uh, local levels, they lost their businesses and some of them came back really good with the digital skills. So personal branding and unique content creation became the key over there. That's what I realized in some of my personal cases. So what do you think about that? How social media helped entrepreneurs probably save the day, save their face, basically? A lot, to be very honest. So I'm so happy that nowadays, uh, at least from my, my motherland, my own country, Bharat Bush, people started realizing that uh, entrepreneurs are disruptors and entrepreneurs can bring job, can bring lot many money, can create lot many disruptions, whether they are profitable or not profitable, that's a different question and different discussion. But people are following entrepreneurs. They are mm. not only following movie stars or TV stars. And that's the interesting part that, that happened. And on the opposite side, couple of TV stars and movie stars I know personally, they started their own business to enter into the corporate world or to become an entrepreneur. And from the entrepreneur's perspective, they want to create their own branding, their own face, their own fan followers, so that eventually they can be a little bit of published somewhere. A little bit of publication is not bad for anyone. So that small branding of personal branding needs to be there and it is much needed in today's era in the next couple of decades probably so that people know you trust you and understand you mm -hmm. but remember the way you project yourself in social media it has to be 99.99 percent .99 accurate when you meet them in person i have seen such cases where you see a very nice guy in social media when you meet them in real life they are opposite. It, it gives you a complete different kind of hit and perspective. So let's be a little bit of careful what we talk, what we say, and how we react in those digital world. And when we meet them in person, I think that's much needed. Very true. So um, when we say personal branding, um, uh, any yeah, before that, even before that, when we talk about unique content creation, any tips there besides being looking real on and off screen? <laughs> just be true to yourself. What you are, just portray that in social media. You don't need I think to... that USP factor has really yeah. gone uh, upside with this digital upscaling. See, if I if I am losing hair and I'm tweaking my hair in Photoshop and <laughs> place that in social media, and when people meet me in person, he, they say, oh my God, then he is doing Photoshop. So let's skip that part. What we are, let's put it that. I am what I am. So people who are, who they are, when they put that in social media, they gain more trust hmm. than retweeting contents. And that's right. a fact. That's a fact. And they do more business. They create more vibration. They create more probably uh, impact in the world rather than when you retweet things. I understand everybody wants to look very good. It's not about the look. It's about the way you are presenting yourself in front of the public. Hmm. Another small input for, for everyone. It's a very silly thing to lock your profile in Facebook and then send a friend request from a locked profile to a person. If you are locking your profile in social media, that means you don't want your content to be displayed to others and you don't need any kind of other connection. You don't need anyone. So you're happy. Okay. Mm. That's the reason you're locking your, your profile. That's the general perspective. Mm -hmm. And when you send a request from a locked profile, even though if you're a journalist, people will not accept it. The reason is you're telling the world that, hey, I'm good. I don't need anyone else. Why I'm raising this point? Because I have seen 
when you are in this this uh, say personal branding world hmm. you created your personal branding you created a facebook page and then you locked your own own profile which is fine it's completely your decision but then you start sending friend requests from the locked profile it gives you a different dimension from people perspective you will lose lot many face uh, you will lose lot many fan base so let's be a little bit of honest about ourselves let's be a little bit of intelligent and say who we are and always always try to be unique what you say and stick to original content rather than taking things from somewhere and then replacing it putting it up so yes earlier i think your product was your brand today you are the brand and how you place it up in the market that matters so uh, that was an amazing conversation with you sir and uh, we got to understand so many points uh, especially this last step is so helpful for uh, social content creators basically and um, i would uh, thank you once again for uh, coming with us and talking so much about artificial intelligence artificial intelligence journalism and uh, branding and unique content creation uh, any message uh, concluding message to our audience any uh, any tips from dubai which uh, probably uh, any suggestion uh, you were there uh, for the uh, uh, you were there for the expo or you were there for like more networking uh, Stuff. uh no devika i was not there for expo expo was a by product for me actually i was there in expo with a lot of expectation that expo will be more for business networking mm -hmm. expo was really big i was there for only a couple of hours it is really good to hop into those countries pavilions and then probably watch how beautiful they are i was actually there for our own investor round table Okay. we brought in around uh, 10 startups from europe wanted to help them to grow their business in middle east plus we tried to raise capital for them which uh, would be much more easier we thought that during covid they can travel easily in dubai mm -hmm. and i had a couple of my business meetings uh, of course a couple of collaboration that's the reason i was there it was really good i was there for 21 working days it was really awesome amazing made so many of uh, my own business contacts and opened my network to those european startups and one of my co partner into this she is from romania so we i opened my entire network they explored it we tried to do a couple of cool things and that was that was the entire trip is all about and uh, it was fun it was hectic it was time taking but then at the same time it was good i'm sure you would have really grabbed that tiger uh, that opportunity the tiger you are and the you know i've heard so many of your uh, speaking uh, events and where you mentioned that be the tiger and grab that opportunity so i'm sure you would have also done the same thing and uh, once again thank you so much sir for being with us it was a great session and uh, for our audience we'll soon come back to you with some other great personality uh, for now be safe and take care thank you thank you